Hey guys, and welcome to the first video in the Smart Contract Security Tutorial Series. In this series, we'll be focusing on common smart contract security vulnerabilities and what we can do to mitigate them and protect our smart contracts from attackers and other malicious contracts and code. Security is a really important issue in smart contract programming since most smart contracts involve some sort of financial transaction. That means that any security holes in your code can result in real financial loss or even your contract being drained of all of its funds. So if you want to learn how to write more secure code, I hope you'll check out some of these videos and start to incorporate these strategies into your programming. All right then, let's get started. So in this video, I want to talk about access control. Access control refers to determining who has access to which parts of your program. In particular, who has permission to invoke certain functions in your code. Now, this may seem like a pretty simple concept, but it's something that's really easy to forget to think about when you're coding, and it's actually one of the most common smart contract security vulnerabilities. So let's take a look at a short example. Let's pretend it's the year 2026, and all real estate sales are executed via smart contracts on the blockchain. So here we have an example of a simple real estate agreement. We have a state variable to hold the price of the house and a Boolean to determine whether or not the seller pays closing fees. That one is defaulted to false in the constructor and the price of the house is set via argument coming in through the constructor. Now we also have setter functions to set the price and set the closing fee agreement. Now, can you spot the security vulnerability in this code? If you said that these two functions are public and anyone can invoke them and thus change the price of the house, then you've guessed correctly. So let's take a look at how this would work. I've compiled my smart contract, so I'm gonna go ahead and deploy it, and I'm gonna set the initial house price to one million. Okay, now let's go ahead and expand our deployed contract. And we can, um, we have automatic getter functions here for the state variable, so we can verify that the price is one million. And let's take a look at the seller pays closing fees. That is properly defaulted to false. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll back up a little bit and I'm currently on the account of the deployer. So in other words, the owner of, of the contract. So now I'm gonna to switch to another account, which is not the owner, all right? And let's attempt to set the house price to five. Okay, so it looks like that successfully executed and we can check the house price. And indeed it has been reset to five. So you could see here a huge and probably pretty obvious security vulnerability that anyone is able to invoke set price and set closing fee on this contract. Probably not a very good thing to have in a real estate agreement and this contract is essentially useless. So what can we do to fix this problem? Well, you may have seen in some of my other videos the use of the require statement, which is a way to impose a condition on the invocation of a function. So why don't we set up a require statement that verifies that the person calling the function is in fact the owner of the contract. All right, so to do that, first we need an owner variable. We'll give that the type address. And we'll set this one to private. And we'll call it owner. Okay, so in the constructor, we will set the owner to the sender of the message or the, the sender of the the person who deploys the contract. So we can leverage our global variable msg.sender and again this refers to the person who's deploying the contract. Okay so we'll set them as the owner and then under set price we'll add a require statement and we'll say owner must equal message.sender. So it's important to note that in this case, when calling this function, message sender is not necessarily the same as the person who deployed the contract. It's just the person or the, the wallet address who's invoking this function at that particular time. All right, and 
require statement will take a second argument, which will be the error message. So let's say only, only the owner can update agreement terms. OK. Let's save that. And let's compile. And oh, I've left off a semicolon right here. There we go. Let's resave that. It'll compile for us. So let's go ahead and redeploy that. And again, we'll set the house price to a million. And I want to make sure that I'm back on that initial account. So the first account here will be the owner account. And we'll go ahead and deploy that. All right, great. Now, we'll again switch to the second account here, which is not the owner. And let's try to change the house price again. So if we've coded our require statement correctly, we should not be able to reset the house price to five. Let's give it a try. And I'll expand this so we can see the console a little bit better. There we go. We can see that that transaction has been rejected. And we can see our error message right here. Only the owner can update agreement terms. Great. So we've successfully protected our set price function from anyone other than the owner resetting the price of the house. All right, now one last point here that I want to make and that we, we haven't yet protected our set closing fee agreement. So we could copy and paste this require statement here, but if we don't really want to use code and program in a, a dry manner, then we can use something called an access modifier. Okay, so I'll show you how that looks. We'll use the modifier keyword and you may have seen this in some of my other videos. We'll call it only owner, and this is basically a, rate, a way to reuse our require statement in multiple places. So it's pretty simple, and all we have to do is come in here and we'll cut and paste our require statement. Okay, and now we just need to add one more thing, and that is a special syntax for access modifiers, which is an underscore and semicolon, and that's just sort of a variable for the rest of the body of the function that we're adding the modifier to. So we can come back to set price and right after public we'll say only owner and we'll come down and we'll add the same access modifier to our set closing fee agreement function. All right, so let's do one more test and make sure that both of these functions are protected so again, I'll come back over here. I will reset the current account to the owner, the deployer, and we'll redeploy this. Again, I'll say 1 million. Is that the right amount of zeros? One, two, three. There we go. Let's go ahead and deploy. Great. Now again, we'll switch to one of the accounts other than the owner. All right, and let's take a look at our deployed contract. All right, let's just check the state variables first. There we go, one million. This should be false. Great. All right, so let's try to um, let's try to change the set closing fee to true. And we'd expect this to fail, right? Expand this a little bit better. Yep. So we can see that that has failed, and we see our only the owner can upgrade agreement terms message. All right, so we should expect the same to happen for set price. Let's try to, try to change the price to something else. And we see that that failed as well. So we've successfully covered, filled the security hole and basically protected our, our functions here that um, have the ability to set or change the terms of the agreement by using the only owner access modifier to limit those functions to the owner of the contract. So I encourage you guys to think about this with every function that you write in Solidity for your smart contracts and, and just you know ask yourself the question, who should have access to invoke this function? And I definitely encourage you to default to the minimum or least amount of privileges unless you have a really good reason to expand the, uh, the privileges for a particular function.
All right, guys, so thanks a lot for watching this video. Um, I encourage you to uh, join the channel, join the family. Would love to have you, and I uh, hope to see you in the next Smart Contract Security video. All right, guys, catch you later.